how the disease mechanism works. How can you get a disease from drinking this? Okay, you're drinking something that's got one, two, three, four, five, six items in a row and some attachments on the side uh, that I've discussed in the past in the books, isopropyl alcohol, malonic acid, and so on. Thank you. All you have to do is drink this part of the complex, or this, this part of the action for your new disease. This is in all your water, so everybody is getting plenty of it. Up to here is what you put in your body, and as soon as it's in your body, all it has to do is find the parasite. It's on page 12. The right side. Yes. Starts with polonium, then cerium, then for cancer, it's ferrocyanide. For the other diseases, it's ferricyanide, a first cousin. And after that, it's the garlic oils. And then comes methylene blue, which pulls the parasite to the, to the site of action on your DNA. So now you have this big complex hanging onto your DNA. And the DNA is a very complicated thing, uh, more complicated than what you would see in your car engine if you lifted the hood. Very, very complex. And if you were to throw, let's say, uh, a small child's chair into the car engine when the hood was up, where would it land? It wouldn't land in a hundred different places, would it? I'm thinking of a, a child's chair, say about this big, this high. It wouldn't land in ten different places, would it? Because the engine running would throw it out. It would probably only land in one place, if at all. Can you, can you imagine that? A, a running engine, and you just throw something in it. You're, it's not going to land any old place. It's going to land in one place if it's complex, like this is. Or, or let's say, a pair of tennis shoes tied together. You threw that thing in. It would probably get thrown out. But if it didn't get thrown out, it would probably only land in its own place, one specific place. And that's what happens to this complicated thing. It's arriving at your chromosomes, where your precious DNA is, and it attaches, and it attaches the same way each time. That's why you get a skin run, because the polonium is going to be at one angle, the cerium is going to be fitting itself in somehow. The cyanide will be attaching to the DNA at another angle and affecting it uh, in its own way. Everything is affecting the DNA in its own way. And it's going to be therefore disturbing the particular genes that are involved right at that location called a site, S-I-T-E, and this kind of mutation was only discovered about less than 10 years ago. It's called site-specific mutation. Before that, we all were taught that mutations are random, that the, that the most important property of a mutation was that it was random. You couldn't predict where it would go, and it was totally different each time. But in this case, it would be site-specific. It's the only way it would be able to attach itself, and that's why we couldn't suspect it. We couldn't suspect that all our diseases are part gene and part environment,
they're part parasite, and all together you get a number of symptoms that you can identify as, um, uh, as a syndrome. And how can we tackle this? We, because it's high time we tackle this. These new diseases are hitting us, and we can tackle it at each point. We have found ways to tackle this at each point. And today I was going to talk about parasites, mostly. And uh, I want to encourage you to look at the rest of this and see that there is a lot in these new concepts that would help you get rid of your parasites. Oh, it's thought, clinically speaking, or scientifically speaking, that we don't have parasites. Well, if you've never seen one, that is what you could believe. But we see them every day in the place where I work. And I thought that the reason others can't learn about it or, or see them is because they don't know what they look like. You can't look at a textbook picture of a parasite and expect to see that in the toilet. It's not like that. It won't be colored. It won't have the same shape each time. It'll be different. So I made a collection of parasites that are real because these are photographed on the, on the last page. So if we flip over to the last page, these are the things that you can find in the toilet bowl if you look at the right time. We've all had breakfast, and that's in the past. So, <laughs> so now we can think about the toilet bowl where the action is here. You do need a loose bowel, otherwise you can't find anything. And a liver cleanse gives you a very nice loose bowel. Most of these were seen after a liver cleanse, and you can find the liver cleanse in any one of my books. It, it results in a diarrhea, and that is where you could find these parasites. Now, it's quite unsavory when you think of anybody else's parasites. But when you think of your child's or your own, all that vanishes, and you're just out there to get rid of them. And that is what we should do. In the new book, I show you, or I tell you, I even show you uh, how to coach, how to get evidence, how to see your own, how to find your own and see them. And that's how these were gotten. So look at, look at what's on the upper left. The arrow is pointing to a little clump of tapeworm. The rest of that grayish kind of solid material is all part of the same one tapeworm. And I haven't talked about tapeworm in the book. That's one reason I chose to talk about it here. Because I didn't have enough uh, data for you to, to start killing your own tapeworms. We all have them. And in case you want to know, this was mine. We all have them. I had a cat. I once had a dog. But even if you never did, you will have cat or dog tapeworms. Yeah. It's more important even than tapeworms to get rid of your flukes and roundworms. There are those three categories. Flukes, those are flat. Roundworms, they are round. And tapes, which are like a tape, like a tape measure. And those three categories have different chemistry to them. You have to kill them in different ways. But I found that there, with this device, 
that their matching could starve them. And that was a much easier thing to do than to kill them. If we kill them, we have refuse to dispose of. And that gives you side effects. Anything that's dead is going to have bacteria right away. And those bacteria and the viruses they bring are going to make you sick. And that's called detox syndrome. That's the popular term for it. But it actually consists of bacteria and viruses. Each parasite has its own bacteria and its viruses, just like we do. And each parasite has a need for certain food factors, just like we do. And so if you page from page, go from page to page, you can see that, that on this page you have parasite essential foods. It's just a sample page. The book has the whole table. And if you deprive the parasite of that essential food, it will go away in about one to two or three weeks. It's surprisingly quick. They notice right away that there is a food shortage. Our different viruses come from the parasites that live in us. Maybe there are some that really belong to us, but so far I've always found a parasite that has been uh, reproducing that virus a lot, and that's why it escapes our immune system. Then there is the cancer location table. Uh, which tells you that each organ has its own allergy which causes the inflammation in that organ to attract this cancer complex to that place. So you begin to see the whole picture and it's a whole world of events. And it's very exciting. This is a very exciting world much more so than I thought uh, earlier. I thought there was just the sky and the water and plants and animals and the earth and rocks. But now I realize that we're getting all this radiation from, from under us. All the elements on this world are, uh, we're exposed to them. They come up in the dust. And they, we're walking in them almost at least knee deep and almost to waist height. We're in all the elements, whether they're radioactive or not. And coming down on us, like rain, constant, uh, is microwave radiation and cosmic radiation. Not just a little bit. So, as you look through the, the handout, here's a section on global disease, and I hope that you feel um, motivated to get involved and come this afternoon, I believe 4 o'clock, room 203, and all the science that I've been talking about is in this book, and we will have that there too.